Awards. I like Mr. Tushman's speech, but I have to admit I kind of zoned out a little during the other speeches. I tuned in again to Miss Rubin starting to read off the names of the kids who made the honor roll. In America, they have this thing where if you're the best, we don't do that. We say, you're going to grow in your own way. You don't have to be the best. You have to be your best. Because we're supposed to stand up when our names are called out, so I waited and listened for my name as she went down the list alphabetically. Reed, Kingsley, Maya, August. I stood up. Then when she finished reading off the name, she asked us all to face the audience and take a bow and everyone applauded. I had no idea where in the huge crowd my parents might be sitting. All I could see were the flashes of light where people were taking photos. I pictured mum waving at me somewhere, though I couldn't see her. Then Mr. Tushman came back to the podium and presented the medals for academic excellence. We know that Charlotte and Amos won things for sports and for academics. And I was really, really thrilled when Mr. Tushman called out Summer's name for a gold medal in creative writing. Oh, I don't know if I like that. I love it for Summer, but I couldn't judge whose is the best writing. I'm just proud of you if you enjoy writing and I'm proud of you if you make, you become a better writer than the beginning of the year. Anyway, I yelled, whoop, 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 Summer, as loudly as I could, though I don't think she heard me. After the last name was called, all the kids who'd won awards stood next to each other on the stage, and Miss, Mr. Tushman said to the audience, Ladies and gentlemen, I am very honoured to present to you this year's Beecher Prep Scholastic Achievers. Congratulations to you all. I appreciate I applauded as the kids on stage bowed and I was so happy for summer. The final award this morning, said Mr. Tushman, after the kids on stage had returned to their seats, is the Henry Ward Beecher, that's who the name school's named after, medal to honour students who have made notable or exemplary, exemplary progress in certain areas of the school. Typically, this area is made for people that volunteer or do amazing things to help the school community. I immediately thought Charlotte will probably get this medal because she organised the coat drive this year. So that's getting coats for people. You donate coats and you distribute them to people that don't have warm coats before the winter. So I kind of zoned out and I looked at my watch. I was getting hungry for lunch. Henry Ward Beecher was, of course... This is going to get good, so tune in, rub your ears if you've tuned out. Henry Ward Beecher was, of course, the 19th century abolitionist, a fiery sermonizer for human rights. He really believed that there shouldn't be slavery. Mr. Tushman was saying when I started paying attention, while reading up on his life in preparation for this war, I came upon a passage that he wrote that seems particularly consistent with the themes I touched on earlier. Themes have been in our heads all year. Not just the nature of kindness, but the nature of one's kindness, the power of one's friendship, the test of character and strength, and the test of one's courage. Turn and tell your neighbor what's gonna happen next. The strangest thing happened next. Mr. Tushman started, croak, his voice started cracking and he started choking up and I started paying attention for real now. What was he saying? He looked like he was going to cry or he was really proud. The strength of one's courage, he nodded. He held up his right hand like he was counting something. Courage, kindness, friendship, character. These are the qualities that define us as a human being and propel us on occasion to greatness. Sure, being good at maths, being good at spelling, being a good rugby player, being a good netball player, being a good musician, but courage, character, kindness, friendship. And this is what the Henry Ward Beecher Medal was about, recognizing greatness. I think you will have something to say to your neighbor about what you think is going to happen. But how do we do that? How do we measure something like greatness? Again, there's no measuring tape for that. How do we even define it? Well, Beecher Prep actually has an answer to that. 
He put on his reading glasses. Greatness, wrote Beecher, lies not only with being strong, but in the right use of your strength. So clever, use it wisely. Strong, willed in your strong, determined, use it wisely. A good leader, don't just plow over other people, use it wisely. Be a good leader, don't just be the boss of everything. You see, use your talents and your skills and your strengths and qualities for goodness. He's the greatest whose strength, he is the greatest whose strength carries up the most hearts. He is the greatest, the, not he, but anyone, is the greatest person is the one that carries strengths. Up and pulls up the most hearts. I guess that's through kindness and things. And again, out of the blue, he got all choked up. He put his two and six fingers over his mouth for a second before continuing. He is the greatest whose strength carries up the most hearts by the attraction of his own. Without further ado, this year, I am proud to award the Henry Ward Beecher Medal to the student whose quiet strength has carried up the most hearts. Drum roll, please. August Pullman, please come up here to receive your award. People started applauding before Mr. Tushman words actually registered in my brain. I heard Maya, who was next to me, give a little happy scream when she heard my name. And Miles, who was on the other side of me, patted me on the back. Stand up, get up, the kids said around me. And I felt lots of hands pushing me up and out of my seat, guiding me to the edge of the row, patting my back, high-fiving me. Way to go, Augie. Ooh, nice going, Augie. I even started hearing my name being chanted. Augie, Augie, Augie. I looked back and I saw Jack. He was leading the chant. Fists in the air, shouting. Amos was shouting. Whoa, little dude. Then I saw Summer smiling as I walked past her. When she saw me look at her, she gave me a secret little thumbs up and mouth to silent. Cool beans. I laughed and I shook my head. Like I couldn't believe it. I couldn't really believe it. I think I was smiling. Maybe I was beaming. I don't know. And as I walked up the aisle towards the stage, all I saw was a blur of happy, bright faces looking at me and hands clapping for me. And I heard people yelling things out at me. You deserve it, Augie. Good for you. I saw all my teachers in the aisle seats. Mr. Brown, Mrs. Petosa, Mr. Roche. Oh, they were all, they were cheering, woo-hoo-hoo, and whistling. Felt like I was floating. It was so weird. Like the sun was shining full force on my face and the wind was blowing. And as I walked closer to the stage, I saw Miss Reuben waving at me in the front row. Next to her, the, there was a teacher crying, happy crying, smiling and clapping. And as I walked up the stairs to the stage, the most amazing thing happened. Everyone in the audience was standing up. Not just the front rows, but the whole audience was whooping and hollering and clapping like crazy. It was a standing ovation for me. I'm thinking back to that first day when he was showing around the school and he said he didn't want to be in the plays and things because he didn't want to be up on stage because people would look at him. Do you remember that with Charlotte and Julian and Jack? Now he's going up on stage and everyone's cheering. This might be another turning point in his life. I walked across the stage to Mr. Tushman who shook my hand with both his hands and whispered in my ear, well done, Augie. And then he placed a gold medal over my head, just like they do in the Olympics. And he had me turn to face the audience and I felt like I was watching myself in a movie almost, like it was someone else. Oh, I could hear the Star Wars theme music playing in my head as I stood on stage. Wasn't even sure why I was getting the medal. Really? No, it's not true. Well, I did know why. It's like people you see sometimes, you can't imagine what it would be like to be that person. Whether it's someone in a wheelchair or someone who can't talk, or maybe their family are different and they feel like it's wrong. Such a shame. Only I know that I'm the person that other people 
maybe to every single person in that aud auditorium, sees as being different. But I thought it was something wrong with me. But now I know that actually there's nothing wrong with me. Everyone recognizes me, is proud of me. To me, though, I'm just me, just an ordinary kid. But hey, if they want to give me a medal for being me, that's okay. I'll take it. I didn't destroy a Death Star or anything. That's from Star Wars. But I did just get through the fifth grade. And that's not easy for anyone. But it's particularly not easy for me. Oh, I love that. Maybe you could think about the change in Augie from the start to now. Some of the, maybe you could make a list, maybe bullet point or draw how the, perhaps the things particularly that have helped Augie to change and grow and become stronger. Someone in our class said something about, you know, a tree always starts with a seed. You always all start as a little seed and the experiences and things make you stronger and stronger. What experiences have has Augie had that has made him stronger and stronger and stronger? And I would suggest that exact experience is one of them. See if you can do that. That's your book club challenge. <laughs>